Well, Happy New Year, guys. It's January 1st. No time to take any holidays when you're self-employed. Today we've got this 2006 Yamaha Rhino. This is our unit. It's actually my old ladies. Uh, we're going to try and resolve a hard starting problem. And uh, a wide open throttle. These little babies, they like to run out of fuel. They'll fall on their face. So we're going to be installing a uh, stage three ECM and the electronic fuel pump. Here is the uh, kit from Black Rhino. It's the electric fuel pump kit. Uh, relay, there's a filter, there's your harness and your mounting plate. Uh, this will solve the running out of fuel at high RPM issue. And then here is the high powered coil and stage three ECM for this 2006 Yamaha Rhino. Comes with the coil, mounting screws, stainless, and some really cool stickers and your ECM. And while we're there, we're gonna put a new tail light in that got knocked out magically a couple weeks ago. So we're gonna show you how to do that. What we're gonna do is uh, replace the ECM. The ECM is located in here behind the battery box. So we're gonna to to pull the battery out. We're gonna start by taking our negative off first and then our positive so we don't short anything out. Take out your ECM, there's one 10 mil bolt at the top. And then three connectors to unplug. And then we put our new ECM back in. It's identical mounting brackets, everything. Put a little dielectric grease on all your connectors so that you don't have any shorts later on down the road. Corrosion, that sort of stuff, keeps the water out. We're not gonna put the battery back in just yet because we wanna wire up our coil and our fuel pump and then we'll put our battery in last so we don't have any accidents. Rhino seats are really easy to get out. There's a little lever you squeeze on the front. Then you lift them out. So I really like these rhinos to work on simple. Right here you can see is where your coil is mounted. There's a little connector down here on a coolant line. Take that off. It plugs in on top here on your spark plug. Very simple, two 10 mil head bolts. Pull that out. Here's our old coil, positive and ground. Here's our new coil. So we're gonna have to take this end off. and put that in place of this orange wire connection. You can either pull this one out, crimp a new end on there, or you can just chop this end off, and solder it on the orange one. It's probably what we're gonna do, the easiest. While you're here, you might as well put a new spark plug in. 06 Rhino 450 is a DR8EA if you're gonna use NGK. Use a little nickel anti-seize on the threads so you don't get any galling in the aluminum head. Now we're here on the passenger seat, the drinker side. I stole that line. Here you'll see the factory insufficient fuel pump. We're gonna be re removing this one and mounting a new fuel pump in here. We're gonna have to run some wires underneath to the battery for power. So there's two eight mil head mounting bolts right here. We're gonna pull the fuel pump out and pull our fuel lines off. There's a pulse line which pumps a diaphragm to pump fuel. There's a line that goes to the carburetor and there's a line underneath that comes from the fuel tank. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Make sure you're not smoking cigarettes. That's your OEM fuel line, or fuel pump, sorry. Now, the new fuel pump will not be mounting back here in its original location. The new fuel pump will be mounted right here on this cross member. So you might as well pull your fuel lines out. Make sure you don't get any dirt in them. We'll just leave them laying there for now. And from your seat mounting plate, you're gonna to wanna to measure back three and a half inches and make a mark there. You're gonna to wanna to mark your holes. Drill them out. Now that we've got our fuel pump mounted to our plate, this is what it should look like about. Put a little liquid thread seals on all your fittings when you're tying it together. And it's gonna mount to the frame like this. 
Now we're going to take the fuel line from our carburetor and hook it on to the back side of our pump. And the one coming out of our tank is going to go to our filter on the pump. And you see how I got our fuel line run down here so the seat doesn't touch it. You might be wondering why I left the other OEM fuel filter in there. That is because the fuel filter that came with the kit is stainless steel. You can't see through it. So here, if you've got the clear fuel filter, you can see if it's dirty, replace it as needed. I left the other one there so I didn't have to hunt for a fitting. And I want to put some dielectric grease in your connector for your harness. Plug that in. Find a nice way to run your wiring up to the front under the hood and uh, make sure it's not rubbing on anything. Once you get your wiring there, we're going to hook this up with a relay and an inline fuse. Before I forget, I should mention get a plug and plug off your pulse line from your old fuel pump. If you don't plug that line off, it's going to be sucking air through there and it'll run lean and not run properly. Now you're down underneath here. Once you got your wiring, run to the front. You put your seats back in. So now we got this uh, relay. We're gonna mount this relay inside of this battery box and run our fire power through there so that uh, we have a completely separate circuit. Uh, the only power we're gonna use from this unit is the power from the battery through the relay and then we're going to get a signal wire for the relay somewhere off the ignition to turn the relay on and off which will then in turn turn the fuel pump on and off with the relay so that we don't melt any of the wiring in the side by side itself. I should show you guys how this works. When you turn your key on you should hear your fuel pump clicking. It's a clicker style pump. It only makes about seven or 10 pounds pressure. And that's why you don't need a pressure regulator. And if you see fuel in your filter here, you know it's pumping it full. Just like that, I can already tell you this thing starts much nicer. I'd say that was a success. Now I can go down the, thro down the road, wide open throttle, and it's not starving for fuel falling on its face. Uh, throttle response is much better, probably because a little more advanced timing curve, uh, a little more aggressive. Uh, so it revs up better. I got more power and top speed. I didn't really pick up much. I got maybe four or five kilometers an hour more top speed because I'm not starving for fuel. Uh, but like I said, there is more power. So, you know, for the few hundred bucks on eBay, it was worth it to get the stage three ECM and uh, coil with the uh, electronic clicker style fuel pump. Till next time, uh, please like and share the video and uh, thank you very much for watching.